to Mindfulness Monday. Um, we are lucky enough to have a certified mindfulness uh, facilitator uh, in Chris Selman. She will lead us through this practice. Uh, relax. Please make sure your phones are on silent. Um, and then uh, Jenny will let you know that the what you see going overhead is exactly what is going to be going overhead tonight between sunset and sunrise. Although the advantage of watching it here in the planetarium is we don't have light pollution. So it'll be a good 2,500 stars you'll be able to see. Where generally in Glendale, you get about 40 stars. So let me recline the seats for you so you're a little more comfy. So everybody, please welcome Krissa and enjoy. Thank you, Chris. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jason, Jenny. Ah, all right. Well, welcome again, or for the first time, if that's the case. Um, I do recommend, as Jason said, to put uh, your phone on silent or turn it off completely so it's not even buzzing in your pocket. Um, set it aside if you're at a desk like me perhaps setting aside any papers or anything that reminds you of uh, busyness and work. And um, as much as possible, have kind of a calm and quiet uh, space in front of you. Um, so the way this usually works is I will talk for a little while, give some instructions, some pointers, suggestions, and then I will talk a little less and a little less, and then we'll be together in silence for a while. And then my voice will um, pipe back up again and lead us um, hopefully gently out of the exercise. And um, I always say, uh, this is um, a take what you need, leave the rest behind sort of situation. <clears throat> my instructions are uh, suggestions if it's not working for you, feel free to just let it go. And um, if you'll forgive me, <clears throat> have a little bit of springtime allergy going on here. So my voice is a little rough. Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, but the, during the whole time, the um, instruction is a uh, suggestion and you're in control of, of the experience. If you have any questions for me or feedback, please feel free to email Jason and he can pass that along. I like to start with um, a definition of mindfulness. And in this case, it is a practice of paying attention to our present moment experience with an attitude of curiosity, openness, and a willingness to simply be with things as they are. And that last little part, um, I think is so important. We're just allowing things to be as they are. And that doesn't mean that you approve of what's happening, that you like it. It may or may not be comfortable. Um, it may or may not meet your preferences in the moment. And I'm thinking in particular about construction noise. We've had a lot in my neighborhood recently, very smelly, like um, street repaving. So like not just the sound, but also the smells of the asphalt that they're laying down. And maybe there at the planetarium, there's noise, vibration outside of the room. <clears throat> and sometimes we might get stuck on the idea that Everything has to be perfectly calm, perfectly silent, um, completely harmonious before we can practice mindfulness. And actually, that's not the case at all. Um, it is possible, not necessarily the easiest, but it is possible to practice mindfulness in the midst of um, a lot of noise or activity. It's helpful to practice it when there's fewer distractions so that when we get to a point where there are many distractions in our day-to-day -day lives or we're going through something that's challenging, whether that's, you know, a difficult conversation or, uh, you know, really slow traffic when we're late 
to getting somewhere. Um, those more challenging situations, we practice in as much as we can, a more um, quiet and controlled environment so that we can take that practice with us into our day-to-day -day lives. So at this point, I usually offer some posture suggestions. For those of us at our desks, um, I'm gonna try the little spin around here. I'm in a just standard office chair. I will often scoot myself forward just a little bit so that I am not resting against the back of a chair. I put a little extra energy into the small of my back and aim to have my head stacked on top of my shoulders at the top of my spine, having a, um, an alert yet relaxed position is what we're aiming for. And again, that just slight little bit of energy at the small of the back. It can help if your hips are slightly higher than your knees. So if you can adjust your chair in that way, maybe the tilt of it a little bit, that can also be helpful so that your feet are actually doing more of the supporting um, of the body, your feet and your seat, and everything is kind of stacked in a column on top. That's just a little idea for anyone who's doing this at a chair today or or not a reclining chair today, or may try it at their desk sometime later in the week. And with that, you might just notice however you happen to be sitting, what does it feel like your body in the chair at this moment? A lot of times we're paying attention to our front facing body and we don't notice so much the back of the body. So you could turn your attention toward the sensation of the body in the chair, fully giving over your weight to the chair. Noticing how it feels if your back is resting against the back of the chair, your seat on the seat of the chair, wherever your arms and hands are resting. Again, that idea of noticing all the points at which the body is being completely supported. all the way down to the feet on the floor. And then you might take three slow, deep, intentional breaths. Noticing the breath in the body in this moment. Perhaps in through the nose and out through the mouth. Saying hello to the upper chest as it rises to the rib cage as it expands, to the belly as it moves up and down. Sometimes for some people, this may be the first time in the day that they've actually noticed how they're breathing.
And once you've taken those three long, slow, deep, intentional breaths, simply allow the breath to return to its natural pace and rhythm. We're not going to try to control the breath in any particular way. Just allowing it to come and go. If you are comfortable with closing your eyes, you're welcome to do that. If you're looking up, gazing at the stars, you're welcome to do that. If you'd like to keep your eyes open, perhaps you're at your desk. I often suggest a downward gaze with a soft focus. Whatever is most comfortable for you. Sometimes keeping the eyes open helps with that alertness that we want to try to maintain. And just as our external experience may be beyond our control in terms of noise or smells or temperature around us, our internal experience may be not what we think of as ideal for practicing mindfulness. And I would counter that with the fact that whatever is showing up for you in the moment is perfectly okay. If you're sleepy, if you're restless, if your mind is still going a mile a minute, um, this is the rich, um, the rich ground that we get to practice with, showing up and uh, having that willingness to simply be with things as they are. Paying attention to the present moment experience in a world where our attention is so valuable, so precious, Companies spend a lot of money trying to get our attention. The act of turning that attention toward your own experience, bearing witness, as it were, to the truth of the present moment is a very generous act. pausing in the middle of your day to simply be with yourself, be in the present moment is a great gift. So knowing that the mind uh, will inevitably wander during a practice period, I often recommend offering it an anchor. <clears throat> the way we give, we have a boat um, has an anchor to keep it from drifting away. We offer something for the mind to uh, just very lightly uh, stay tethered to the here and now. One of the often most accessible is the breath. Noticing where you feel the breath in the body most easily. In the nose, 
the chest or the belly. And just offer that to the mind as something to be curious about. What are the qualities of breath? Is it a long or a slow breath? Is the breath shallow or deep? Is it smooth or choppy? Slow or fast? So approaching this as an experiment, giving the mind a little bit of a job to do, observing the breath, Maybe even noticing the point at which the inhale turns into an exhale. Or at the bottom of the exhale, can you find the exact moment where the exhale becomes an inhale? And if after a few breaths or many, you find that the mind has wandered, it's hopped on a train of thought and ridden far down the track away from the station, you can simply notice that. You could label it thinking. planning, remembering, just the light touch of a label on what is happening, what you're noticing. That too is mindfulness practice. 
what is happening in the present moment is that the mind has wandered and you have noticed it. And as much as possible, you could do that with kindness and compassion rather than judging. It can be easy to get caught up in, oh, why am I so busy-minded? Why can't I stay here in the present moment? Try to let that go. The practice is developing, cultivating this skill of noticing and returning. Each time the mind wanders back to the present moment, it's like building a muscle in a way. It does take practice. Someone once told me that's why we call it a mindfulness practice and not a mindfulness perfect. So simply notice, label what is happening, return the mind to the anchor of the breath with friendliness and kindness.
And after your next exhale, if you have been focusing on the breath, I invite you to let that go. If your mind has been away down the thinking track on a different train, I invite you to return again to all the points at which your body is making contact with the chair or the floor beneath you, your hands perhaps resting in your lap, Noticing again the back of the body, the soles of the feet, and the ways in which you are completely supported in this moment. And then maybe taking another two or three deep intentional breaths, wiggling the fingers and toes, perhaps rolling the shoulders, adjusting the neck, sensing into both the back and the front of the body here as it is in space, wherever you are in this moment. and offering to yourself a little bit of appreciation for having used your valuable, precious attention to simply be with whatever it has been your experience in this last little while. Hopefully it invited in some stillness and ease that you can take with you through the rest of your day and into the week. Thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Krista. Uh, thank you everybody that attended. Um, Kimsey, if you need flex, uh, make sure you sign in in the chat there. Uh, if you anybody else needs flex, I'll have a I'll get my pad here and you can sign in. Uh, we will be back again on Monday, um, so please come enjoy. All right, Krista, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Take and care, everyone. everybody. Have a great day. Okay, you. you're right. welcome. Bye.